All right, so here you have a presentation about LaTeX typesetting, and it's somewhat of a tutorial. And I'm going to kind of move through it uh, fairly quickly. Don't get too worried about that uh, if you uh, are not uh, understanding or catching on to every detail. I will be placing this presentation in a location where all of you will be able to have access to it. And I also will be putting the recording of this presentation in a place where you can get access to it also if you would like to watch it again. So here are the objectives for this presentation. Why LaTeX and who cares? And also, what is the software that you need to install in order to write or generate documents like I showed you earlier? What does a typical LaTeX file look like? What kinds of documents and packages can you use to uh, create LaTeX files? How do you write equations? How do you include figures, references? And even how do you include LaTeX in, in Microsoft PowerPoint uh, presentations? And lastly, uh, a, a little bit of a conclusion and hopefully some time for questions. So why LaTeX? Well, the answer is to be able to write technical articles or documents that include equations, equation numbers, and figures with equations. And an example is shown there at the bottom of your screen. And this is very popular in academia and research. And so if you're wanting to write professional looking documents, this is the, the uh, uh, presentation for you, hopefully, that will help you uh, get started to learn about how to do this. Who cares? Well, it would be people who are writing articles in science, math, engineering, uh, and so on. Anyone who wants to write technical documents that have lots of formulas, uh, students headed to graduate school, and professors uh, like myself like to use this typesetting um, application. So what is the necessary software? Well, it turns out that the software on this page is all free. So that's a very nice part of this. Uh, the very first software that you would want to uh, uh, know about is called MicTech. And this is actually a thing that will process the LaTeX text file that we're going to create to create our documents. And it's almost like it either processes or compiles that text file and turns it into the pretty PDF file that I was showing you a little bit ago. And if you go to mictech.org, you'll be able to download that software, follow the instructions, and install it. You'll also want to have Adobe Acrobat Reader. You'll want to install GhostScript at this website and also Ghost View. Uh, and Technique Center, which is basically a text editor that uh, is a very, very convenient integrate, integrated text editor that helps you create your LaTeX file, uh, also process it. It will automatically run MicTech behind the scenes in Technique Center and generate the, the PDF document in the end that you want and that you can read or share with others that is of a technical nature. The last one here on this page is IPE, which is a drawing editor. As you may know, in many technical uh, articles, uh, there are figures that may need to accompany uh, your article. And in that drawing, you may want to have some math symbols or Greek symbols or formulas that are made with MicTech to be consistent. And this drawing editor is very, very helpful in that regard because it incorporates LaTeX right into the figures if you do it properly. 
And so I highly recommend that. It's one of the few that I am aware of that exists that will do that for you. And it's very, very useful. Now, there's a, a couple of other pieces of software that you may want to use. Uh, and that is MATLAB. MATLAB is one that can generate plots and graphs for you in the correct formula in the correct format to insert into LaTeX documents. And uh, you can save your graphs as encapsulated postscript plots with the .eps extension. And those are the type that I recommend that you use for including in LaTeX. Octave is another alternative to MATLAB. It will also do this if you use it correctly. And you can see that even in this example I have on the screen, I've used some Greek letters and written some equations in the plot. And I did that within MATLAB. MATLAB actually uses LaTeX commands to generate formulas in your plots if you know how to do it correctly. And also the Greek letters where you need to have them. Now, when you go to install the necessary software, uh, you will find that uh, there's a, a, a variety of file formats that you'll be uh, working with. Uh, within the text editor, you'll be creating a LaTeX document, and it will have the .tx, t, .tex uh, uh, extension on the file and that's going to be a text file that gives all the LaTeX commands and your text for your document and so on and we're going to see more about that later as I continue the presentation. You're also going to work with encapsulated postscript files, PDF files and if you want to have a bibliography generated you're also going to work with .bib or bibtech files. So if you're going to install the software, you'd want to install MicTech first. And uh, with most uh, modern computers, you're probably going to use the 64-bit version. And during that installation, which takes a while, you're going to want to answer uh, a couple of the questions that arise during that installation the following way. When it asks about automatically downloading packages, you want to say yes. And when it talks about what default paper choice you want to make, go ahead and choose letter. And that just means that you're going to be generating documents that are of a size for 8.5 by 11 size paper, which is typical. Uh, you want to install GhostScript, GhostView, Adobe Acrobat Reader, if you don't have it already, Technique Center, and IPE. So here's an example of what the LaTeX editor looks like. And you can see it has a lot of options and various things up here, and it looks kind of complicated. But um, after you try it and play with it for a while, you'll start to learn various aspects of this text editor. Right inside this text editor, you can see all of the LaTeX text file. Uh, or a portion of it actually in this picture that you would maybe have in there to edit uh, in which you would eventually generate uh, your PDF document. Um, but this is where you enter all that text and your various commands as well as the written part of your document where you're explaining what the formulas are for and and how to derive equations perhaps and also where to include figures and so on. So very, very handy uh, text editor that uh, can be used when creating LaTeX documents. Here is a screenshot of the drawing editor. And you can see here I've drawn this uh, generic figure and I've inserted some formulas and some Greek letters and this is very useful because uh, most drawing packages uh, do not allow you to insert these uh, various characters right into the file 
uh, or the, the drawing where you need them. And this uh, program allows you to do that. So it's very, very convenient when you're working with technical figures and you want to have it have uh, characters and fonts that match your main document. So now, in order to continue in this presentation, I am basically creating for you uh, kind of a tutorial here. And so I'm, I'm going to give you some recommendations of how to set things up if you are going to uh, start to try and generate a LaTeX document. And so the first thing that I recommend is that somewhere on your computer, maybe you would create a folder called LaTeX example. And then within that folder, I would also recommend that you create a subfolder called figs. And basically what that means is in the LaTeX example, that's where you're going to put your text file with your LaTeX commands. And in the figs subfolder is where you're going to put your files for all of your figures. It just kind of keeps things a little neater and more organized and we'll be able to access that information uh, appropriately. The next thing that you would do after creating those folders is you would want to run the text editor called Technique Center. This is of course after you've already installed all of the software. And then inside that Technique Center text editor you would want to go to File, select New, and select um, the file that you would want to save. Oh, maybe I have a typo here, uh, but it, you would want to select New, and a, a new file, blank file, would come up. And you would want to, um, uh, of course, you're going to have a black, blank document, but you would want to choose File and select Save As and save the file as example.tex and you're gonna see that file show up in this folder um, you want to make sure that you save it in in this folder um, latex example and you would see that file show up like this example.tex and once you have that set up, we'll be able to add text into there and create our LaTeX document. Before I move on, I just want to say that this folder that uh, we have created is where a lot of uh, our work with the LaTeX file is going to show up. We're going to put our BibTeX file in here. Eventually, when we're all done and we generate our PDF file, it will show up inside this folder. And there are other files that are generated in the process of compiling our text file to generate the PDF file. And, and I don't ever look at those files. It's just something that happens in the compilation process. So uh, before I go on, I want to make a few other comments. And that is that I recognize that this is a lot of information. It may look complicated, but I just want to encourage you that later when you, if you choose to learn how to do this, you can at your leisure go through this presentation on your own and follow the directions and uh, I believe that you can do it and of course you can ask me questions uh, if you need to uh, but um, the, not only will I have the presentation available to you but I'll also have this um, presentation as a video recorded for you so now uh, let's look at a generic LaTeX file. So this one's going to be very, very simple, and it's not even really going to be complete, but it's just going to basically show you what it kind of looks like. And then we'll get into a more realistic example. But basically, a LaTeX file only has two parts. It has a preamble, and it has a body. And so in the preamble, you're going to put things like maybe you put some comments up here and comments are denoted by starting them with a percent symbol 
And then you're going to specify what type of document that you want to include up here. And right now I'm just indicating that as a comment, but really later you're going to put some commands up there to specify the document type. And you're also going to include the packages that you want to include in uh, the document. And we'll cover that in just a little bit, some more. Uh, and then you have the main body of the document. And in order to denote the body of the document, you're going to issue a begin document command. And you'll notice that that begin command starts with a backwards slash. And Mic Tech, the program that will basically process this text file, it's looking for these backslash symbols. And every time it sees that, it knows that you are saying, hey, here's a LaTeX command, and I want you to execute it and understand what it means. And so we're going to begin the document. We're going to write the body of the report right here at this point. And then we would issue an end of document command at the very end. And so it really has just those two pieces. So our job is really to generate the preamble and then write the body of the report. So with that in hand, I'm going to go ahead and show you a very short, um, simple uh, LaTeX text file that uh, fills in these various pieces to a level that would make it possible for you to create some LaTeX documents and uh, I'm going to keep it simple and short. Uh, it will be enough for you to play with and try on your own if you ever try to set this all up. And uh, you'll be able to do a lot of things just with the simple setup that I provide for you here. So first off, I'm going to create a preamble. and you could just simply copy this text right into the uh, Technique Center text editor and this would be your preamble. And you'll notice I have a comment. I just say this is my example LaTeX file. And then I, in, I issue the document class command. I've told it that I want to use a 12 point font for my text. And I'm using the document class article. In, in other words, that's the type of document that I'm writing. It's just a technical article. There are other types of document classes that we could put in there, but the article class is a, a, a good one for uh, someone uh, wanting to try it and play around with uh, writing such documents, and so that will work for us. Then I have four different uh, use package commands. Uh, I have a series of packages for uh, mathematical formulas and so on. I also have uh, a use package command for EPS fig, which allows me to include EPS figures. Uh, a command for various geometry commands that I can use in my LaTeX document. In this case, I'm using it simply to set my margins at one inch all the way around the uh, perimeter of the page. And then I also have the enumerate package. It allows us to make lists inside of uh, our document that may be um, enumerated with maybe alphanumeric characters uh, or Roman numerals, uh, etc. And uh, even though you may not understand what all of these packages are, I would encourage you to just copy it right into the text file. Uh, just using just these four lines uh, for um, what packages you include will be sufficient for you to do all kinds of great things with generating these documents. Once you become more of an expert, you can certainly um, add or modify these things here. Now for the main body of the report, we would want to 
uh, you, you could put in a comment, say you're beginning to start the document here. You can issue um, the begin document command and you can put in uh, information for the title that you want to show at the beginning of the document, the author's name, and also uh, the command to go ahead and make the title. You can also include an abstract for the text um, and you would uh, do that by uh, including the abstract command and the end abstract command and you can put your abstract in between there. You can also add a section with a title by issuing the section command and you can put here introduction for this example and then you can put in text that you might want to write in that section. You can also refer to your equations with the equation reference command and it's referring to equation one which I have down below that I've given this name and you can also do in-text citations by using the cite command. In order to include formulas, you have to create an equation environment. And you do that by issuing the begin command, begin equation command, and the end equation command. And in between there, you can put in your formula. Now I understand that right now you may not know how to write these formulas because it looks like a lot of strange characters, but uh, I will show you some examples in a little bit which will help make that more clear. You can also add a, a subsection and the heading for that subsection, the text, and you can also include a figure in the main text of your article. And you can refer to that figure with a reference command and I have labeled that particular figure with the word fig1 and so if I refer to it using that name it will uh, put the number of that figure in place of this in the main text where I have inserted that reference command. It also has a place for that figure for a caption and that uh, figure EPS uh, figure command is going to go and look for that file in the subfolder figs that I had you create uh, when you were uh, creating a, a folder structure for where you put your LaTeX files. And lastly, you can put in a section for a conclusion. You can also insert some commands to include a bibliography. And lastly, the end of the document. Now in order to do this bibliography though you need to have created a bibtech file and you can see this funny name I have here for the bibtech file but um, I will talk a little bit more about that in a little bit but that is um, where you would put in all kinds of information about your various authors and books and journal articles that maybe you were referencing as you wrote your uh, LaTeX file. So once you have all of that typed into your text editor, you're going to press this little uh, icon in the text editor and it will process or build the LaTeX file. And right here in this little uh, drop down uh, section on the text editor, you can specify that you want it to take the LaTeX text convert it to PostScript and finally convert it to a PDF file. And that PDF file is going to be the final thing that you want to, um, that, that is the end result actually. And that will contain your uh, constructed file and then you can read it and see if it's correct and if it is that's great and if it has mistakes or things you need to fix you can go into uh, back to this uh, text file and edit it and make corrections. Also when you process it, when it's done, it will tell you whether or not you had any errors. And uh, you can look and scroll through this information down below and see whether or not um, uh, you've 
have errors and if it does it will give you some hints about where those errors are happening inside your document. And finally after it has done this if it, if it builds with no errors then you can click on this button here and you would have um, your PDF file would come up on the screen and you'd be able to look at it and check it out and see how you did. So here's an example of uh, the result of the LaTeX file that I just described to you in the text file. Now there's some more on the next screen um, but this is the first part of it. You can see the title, author's name, the date, the abstract location, the various sections that I've added, uh, the formula that we created, and also a figure. It also has a section for the conclusion and the references. Now you'll notice that these references here were referred to in the main document. And the equation here is actually referring to equation one. And it's done all of that for us uh, because of the way that we issue those LaTeX commands within the text editor. And also the same thing for the figure these numbers are agreeing with what I'm referring to and uh, if you were to insert additional equations in here uh, it would renumber everything as necessary it's it's very handy to be able to do that when you're dealing with documents that have lots of equations alright so as I mentioned uh, the document class is the place where we specify what type of article or I should say what kind of document that we're wanting to generate. Uh, with LaTeX uh, people certainly create articles, they re create reports and also books. Uh, there are entire books that are created with this software and uh, there are certainly other document classes av available but these are the three most common article, report and book. Uh, also, besides just specifying the font size, there are certainly other things that you can specify. But for now, this is uh, uh, adequate for the uh, uh, document class command for you to play with it and try it. And as I indicated before, here are the various uh, packages that I had us include. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about that except to say that these are uh, a great set to start with when you're learning LaTeX and uh, you probably for a while won't need to do much more than that when you're just trying it out. So now equations. How do you go about writing equations? And uh, one of the things that comes up a lot in equations is Greek symbols and uh, uh, so I show some examples here and so basically if you want uh, the Greek letter alpha to show up of course our alphabet capital A is the same as the Greek alphabet capital A uh, for alpha and so they don't have a special command for that however for the lowercase alpha you have to use the backward slash and then the word alpha similarly with beta and then if there is a capital letter for a Greek letter then you would issue that command but with a capitalized uh, letter for the first part of that Greek letter's name gamma in this case. Uh, for lowercase you'd use the lowercase and you can see there's lots of examples here I haven't written out the whole alphabet but those are just some examples to show you how it works. And of course that would need to be done within a math environment or an equation environment otherwise it won't understand uh, those commands. So now if you want to write some equations uh, for example if you wanted a sub i you would do capital A and then you do the underscore i the underscore symbol is for subscripts you can uh, see some examples there and what the result would be you can also do some examples with superscripts. In this case, you would use the uh, uh, up arrow uh, character on your keyboard. Uh, and um, 
you can get uh, superscripts. You can also get superscripts and subscripts for uh, various formulas or characters that you need to generate. For the square root command, you can uh, put uh, equations within the square root command and the formula generated would be as shown on the screen there. For fractions, you use the fraction command and you get the numerator over the denominator. So you'd get AB over CD. You can also write sums. And um, I, I kind of skipped over it, but on the previous screen, uh, I want to mention that on the internet, if you were to search for this short math guide for LaTeX, you would be able to find all kinds of information and really good examples about how to write equations and math symbols and characters and so on. So now, if, as I've said, you want to write an equation, you have to do it within the equation environment. This is alerting uh, Mike Tech, the processor, uh, that you're wanting to write an equation, that you're not writing just plain old text. And so it is familiar with what uh, these various uh, commands and symbols mean, and as a result, it will generate this formula down below. And it will also supply a number for that equation automatically. Uh, if you insert in your sentence a reference to that formula which I have called quadratic by labeling it with the label command and then I reference that name it will put the number of that equation right into the sentence where I include it and uh, that is very handy uh, when generating these uh, technical documents and trying to keep track of all of the various formulas and being able to refer to the correct equation numbers. Here's some examples that I will kind of skip over quickly also, but basically you can start to see how it is that a person could write integrals, derivatives, partial derivatives, and take a look at the various commands. Uh, I, I could spend some time talking about these individual things, but at this point, I think you're probably getting the idea that it takes some learning to go and learn these various uh, terms and commands that are um, often maybe being uh, needed to be used. Uh, but I, I'd like to also encourage you that uh, when I am writing these documents like this, and if I don't know a command, it's a very simple thing to just go to Google and look up how do I do this in LaTeX. And pretty soon you'll have examples that come right up. And uh, it's uh, once you understand the basic idea behind doing these types of documents, it's very easy to go and learn whatever you need to do, know for a special document you're making. Uh, we also have the ability to put in matrices within our documents. And you can see an example here of a matrix with parentheses enclosing the matrix. Each row in the matrix has terms separated by the AND symbol. And each row is terminated by two backward slashes. The last row does not need a, a backward slash. You can also generate matrices with square matrices and curly braces. If you want to write a formula within the main text of your document without using the equation environment, you can do that by using two dollar signs. And then you just put your equation between those dollar signs. And then the sentence would look like the one I have here on the bottom. And it would just insert the equation. So now if you want to include figures, you'd use the, uh, you, you gotta be sure to include the package EPS fig at the beginning in the preamble of your document. And you also would have had to make uh, an EPS file that includes your figure. And you can do that with MATLAB or IPE. 
And then you can issue the figure command. And uh, we, we saw this before when I was showing you the example text uh, LaTeX file. And uh, so, of course, uh, you, you use the begin and end figure commands. Uh, you can center the figure on the page. You can include the correct file by referring to it here in the figs subfolder. And you can specify the width that that figure will take up on the page in terms of a percentage of the text width. You can also include a caption and provide a label for your figure uh, so that you can refer to it in the main text using the uh, reference command. And last, uh, you can include a bibliography, uh, as I indicated before, and you'd have to create a bibtech file to do that. So here's an example of some entries in the bibtech file. And it looks kind of complicated, but it's set up in such a way so that you have carefully entered all of the relevant information so it can take that information such as author, title, publisher, uh, the publishing uh, location, uh, edition, and the year it was published, and it will generate your bibliography for you from that information. And so there's a, a book format for bibliographic information, an article format, and so on. And, and the very first part of these is where you put in a special name for this bibliographic uh, article, uh, book or article. And then you can refer to those individual references by the name that you have given them. All right, so you may have realized that in this PowerPoint presentation, I have actually been using LaTeX equations within this PowerPoint. And there is a way to add such equations to your PowerPoints. And the way to do that is by using a, 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 a PowerPoint add-in called IguanaTech. And you can find that at the, the website that I have on this slide right here. And if you go to that website and follow the directions, you can get that add-in you can add it to your PowerPoint presentation and you will be able to add various LaTeX equations right into your presentation. Uh, IguanaTech actually will make use of MicTech that is installed on your computer and behind the scenes when you construct these equations it will go to Mike Tech and it will compile the information you give it and it will uh, create these uh, equations right here in the PowerPoint and in fact I'm going to demonstrate that for you right here on this screen and so you can see I have a couple of equations uh, inside uh, PowerPoint of course you have various tabs at the top and if you go to this IguanaTech tab which will only show up if you have correctly inserted the add-in into PowerPoint you can click on that and you can then also let's say you already have some equations you could click on that equation and you could edit it and you would be able to go in there and you could change alpha to A, beta to B, and gamma to a C, and click regenerate. And you can see it changed this formula for us uh, to A, B, and C instead of alpha, beta, gamma. And you can also resize that formula you can move it around to wherever it is that you want on your PowerPoint presentation. You can also generate a new formula if you'd like to. Uh, you can uh, click on the new LaTeX display button and you can go in here and I have it set up to a default where it defaults to a text color of black 
and it has an equation already in there for me and if I say generate uh, click on that it will generate that formula for me and then I can drag it to where I want to have it in my PowerPoint uh, certainly you can go and edit that if you choose and you can put in for instance a fraction maybe we want to do pi squared over some number and uh, generate it and that would then show up on your screen so it's very convenient to do that type of thing for a technical um, presentation and certainly since you're all involved in engineering this is something that will probably arise during your time as a student and uh, hopefully be useful to you so here's the conclusion there is a learning curve to learning LaTeX LaTeX is for writing documents with many equations it helps automatically do a lot of the formatting and equation numbering uh, if you just insert an equation, LaTeX will renumber all the equations you already had, and similarly for figures and tables. So it makes it very convenient to keep track of all of those things if you learn how to do it properly. If you intend to go to uh, graduate school or do research, uh, this is something that's uh, probably going to be very, very useful to you. Uh, the best way to learn it is to try it. Don't be afraid. Be brave and give it a shot. Uh, if you don't know how to do something, Google it. And uh, there are many resources that can be found online to help you. And so with that, I am going to conclude the presentation. And uh, I'd like to open up for any questions that people might have.